The following video is a collaboration between Sankarn and I. We have both made two separate videos, and we want you to play them both at the same time. If you don't, you'll miss half of the content. To easily view these two videos, there will be a link to YouTube Multiplier in the description below. Where the two videos are synced up and ready to go. If you don't want to use YouTube Multiplier, you can always try to start both videos at the same time. Good luck and enjoy! Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will do a series of experiments and observe a bug we like to call the immediate update bug or the lever bug. When powered with the lever directly, the rear piston once again extends as usual. When the lever is unpowered, the rear piston will also appear to retract as normal. However, this time the front piston will not extend at all. Ultimately, it seems that the front piston isn't powered at all, unlike in the first example. After postulating this, we created the following redstone circuit. If this circuit is unpowered by the lever, the two pistons will extend at the same time. According to our postulate, this is because the piston retracts in 4 game ticks, which is identical to the time it takes for the torch and repeater to turn on. Thus, the two pistons at the end extend at the same time. Ultimately we say the lever input gives a synced result on the falling edge, because when the lever turns off, the pistons extend at the same time. However, the repeater input gives an unsynced result on the falling edge, because when the lever turns off, the pistons extend at different times. However, when the circuit is powered by the repeater, everything is powered as normal. The repeater takes 4 game ticks to turn on, and the piston takes 3 game ticks to extend. Thus, the two pistons at the end do not extend at the same time. Ultimately, we say the lever input gives a synced result on the rising edge, because when the lever turns on, the pistons at the end extend at the same time. However, the repeater input gives an unsynced result on the rising edge, because when the lever turns on, the pistons extend at different times. We will now show you every single input method we could think of, and how it reacts to this bug. This section will be quite long, and you may skip it if you wish. However, you may miss valuable information if you do so.
All buttons are synced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. Braking grip wire with pistons is unsynced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. Setting off grip wire is synced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. Placing and riding a minecart on top of a detector rail is synced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. The day-night light sensor, clicking included, is synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Placing and breaking redstone dust is synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Placing and breaking blocks, both in creative and survival, is synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Placing and breaking a repeater is unsynced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. A piston pushed or placed into a powered location, pushing a strongly powered block, will give a synced result on the rising edge and an unsynced result on the falling edge. Commands executed by a player are synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Repeaters are unsynced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. Pistons extending and retracting strongly powered blocks are synced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. This is always the case, no matter where you take the output. A zero-tick extension of a block that strongly powers redstone two blocks away is unsynced on the rising edge and untestable on the falling edge. Falling sand entities which were in or land in strongly powered locations are synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Liquid breaking a redstone signal is untestable on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge, even when random tick is high. Obsidian generation from dispenser placed lava and flowing water is unsynced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. Hoeing dirt is synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Farmland turning into dirt by placing a block on top of it is synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. All explosives are synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge.
strongly powered trees plus giant mushrooms growing by bone meal are synced on the rising edge and untestable on the falling edge. Silverfish breaking out of strongly powered monster egg blocks are synced on the rising edge and synced on the falling edge. Endermen placing blocks in strongly powered locations are synced on the rising edge and untestable on the falling edge. Updating butted dust with a repeater is untested on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. The end platform refreshing due to a non-player entity is unsynced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. The blocks being destroyed by the Ender Dragon's hitbox give a synced result on the rising edge and a synced result on the falling edge. Commands executed by a command block are unsynced on the rising edge and unsynced on the falling edge. The nether portal forming is untested on the rising edge and untested on the falling edge. Here are the results from when we zero tick a piston. How do these results make sense? When we first saw these results, we were surprised too. However, on further inspection, the results from the zero tick extensions align perfectly with the piston's mechanics shown from the two other experiments. One can clearly see in the initial experiments that whenever the piston does something instantaneously, it provides an unsynced result. For example, when a piston retracts a strongly powered block, the strongly powered block turns into transparent block 36 instantaneously. This gives an unsynced result. Similarly, if a piston extends a block which is cutting a redstone source, the block being pushed will turn into transparent block 36 and allow the redstone current to pass. The signal will be unsynced. From these results, we can clearly see that whenever a piston behaves instantaneously, we get unsynced results. Therefore, one can predict the results for the serotic pulls from the initial experiments. Tripwire hooks in general are like buttons, which isn't surprising at all. I mean, they activate just like buttons, but dependent on the player's position. However, it is surprising how breaking a tripwire with a piston is different from breaking a tripwire as a player. One thing we also noticed is that this may be more related to the way pistons behave, which is described in the last section, since breaking tripwire with a piston is actually a form of instant wire. 
And as we know, whenever a piston causes something to happen instantaneously, the signal produced is unsynced. However, upon further testing, we found that breaking tripwire with water also gave unsynced unsynced results, and if you broke the tripwire with multiple pistons at once, you could even get undetectable results with pulses faster than zero ticks. Thus, more research should be done in this area. What about the end platform refreshing? These are strange. Why is the end platform refresh different when dealing with players to when it deals with other entities? Upon reanalyzing some of our results and finding some new mechanics, we had to revise our initial theory. The new mechanics we found were quite interesting. In the last video published on my channel, you were able to see a strange quirk involving redstone torches being placed on redstone blocks. You would have seen that they actually gave off one game tick pulses instead of the commonly fought two game tick pulses. Finally, when we power a command block with a lever, the redstone dust powers as soon as the command block places the block. However, the command block places the block one game tick after it is powered, when powered by a repeater or even another command block. The built-in delay of sync transmitters are unchanged regardless of the input type. Now let's move on to the third line. First we must look at our input, since the repeater is an unsync transmitter. Our input is in this case a lever. By looking in our spreadsheet we can see that levers give synced output on both edges. This causes the repeater to have a delay of one game tick instead of its base delay of two game ticks. This repeater then powers the pistons which will extend in three game ticks. By looking in our spreadsheet we can see that pistons pushing strongly powered blocks give a synced output on the rising edge. This piston powers a repeater, which is an unsynced transmitter. This causes the repeater to have a delay of one game tick instead of its base delay of two game ticks. Thus the light blue wool will power after a total of five game ticks after the lever is switched on.
Now let's move on to the fifth line. Pistons are immune to the instantaneous update bug. Thus, both these pistons extend in three game ticks each. In total, the purple wool will be powered after a total of six game ticks after the lever is switched on. And by powering the lever, we can see that this is correct. Now let's move on to the third line. First we must look at our input, since the repeater is an unsynced transmitter. Our input in this case is a repeater. By looking in our spreadsheet we can see that repeaters give an unsynced output on both edges. This causes the repeater's delay to be unchanged from its base delay of two game ticks. This repeater then powers the pistons which will extend in three game ticks. By looking in our spreadsheet we can see that pistons pushing strongly powered blocks give a synced output on the rising edge. This piston then powers a repeater, which is an unsynced transmitter. This causes the repeater to have a delay of one game tick instead of its base delay of two game ticks. Thus the light blue wool will power after a total of six game ticks after the lever is switched on. Now, let's move on to the fifth line. Pistons are immune to the instantaneous update bug. Thus, both these pistons extend in three game ticks each. In total, the purple wool will power after a total of six game ticks after the lever is switched on. And by powering the repeater, we can see that we are correct. What happens when we power this with a repeater? The first line will power after two game ticks since the repeater is receiving an unsynced input from the lever. The second line will power after two game ticks since the repeater is receiving an unsynced input from the serial tick repeater. The third and the fourth lines will power after four game ticks since the repeaters are receiving unsynced inputs. The fifth and the sixth line will power after six game ticks since the repeaters are receiving unsynced inputs as you can see when we power the line with the repeater.
However, when powered with a repeater, the piston extends in 3 ticks, as before, but this time the repeater powers on after 2 ticks. This gives a 1 tick pulse. It is important to note that this will occur even with falling edge detectors of the same design. As long as this bottom component is an unsync transmitter, the design will give different results depending on which type of input you use. Next, let's deal with the top line. The falling edge of a strongly powered block pushed by a piston gives an unsynced signal. This means repeaters and torches behave based on their base delays. So we have two ticks from the torch and two ticks from the repeater, making the top line extend in four ticks. When the bottom line powers, the piston will take 3 game ticks to move the block into a position where it cuts the source. On this falling edge, the block cutting gives a synced signal, thus the torch will turn on after only 1 game tick. This means the bottom line will also turn on after 4 game ticks. Ultimately, the two circuits will have the same delay even though traditionally one would think they would be 1 game tick apart. Example 6. Given the base delay of a dispenser is 4 game ticks, and each dispenser contains a lava bucket, how long will it take for the purple wool to power? If turned on with a lever, the first dispenser will dispense its lava after 3 game ticks of being powered, due to it being an unsync transmitter. This lava will become obsidian, which gives an unsynced output making the next dispenser dispense its lava after its base delay 4 game ticks. Thus the total delay is 7 game ticks. However, with a repeater input, the first dispenser will dispense its lava after 4 game ticks of being powered. This means the total delay, if powered by a repeater, is 8 game ticks. First, let's look at his platform refresh detector. Currently, the detector works by detecting when the cobblestone block is deleted. 
By default, this cobblestone block is being strongly powered by a repeater, and the actual detection of the platform refresh happens using the falling edge of this signal. So let's look in our spreadsheet for the results for platform refresh. So here we can see when an item or falling sand entity passes through the portal and causes the platform to refresh, the falling edge produces an unsynced signal. However, when the player causes the platform refresh, the resulting signal is synced. Have you finished? Well, let's look at our design. Upon powering the input of this circuit with a lever or a repeater, the second piston will instantly retract, meaning that it will not give off a pulse to the outputting repeater. However, if you depower it with a lever, the repeater set to 3 will turn off after 5 game ticks, and the piston will finish their movements after 6 game ticks. Therefore, when depowering with a lever or synced signal, the circuit will not give off a pulse. However, if you depower the circuit with an unsynced input, such as a repeater, the repeater set to 3 will stay on for 6 game ticks. This is the same amount of time it takes for the first piston to retract and the second piston to extend, meaning a zero tick will be generated which the repeater can see. So by now we have worked our way through 7 examples, and by following these examples you should be able to work out the precise timings of your own circuits. One problem remains. Say I have a circuit which runs off a synced synced signal, but I only have an unsynced unsynced input. What do I do? The third is a piston pushing a block which is strongly powered. This converts the rising edge of any signal to a synced rising edge signal and the falling edge of any signal to an unsynced falling edge signal. And finally, the fourth is a piston pushing a block which cuts the power source. This converts the rising edge of any signal to an unsynced rising edge signal and the falling edge of any signal to a synced falling edge signal. The first is a circuit which detects the rising edge of a synced signal. The second is a circuit which detects the falling edge of a synced signal. The third is a circuit which detects the rising edge of an unsynced signal. The fourth is a circuit which detects the falling edge of an unsynced signal. And that is how the cookie crumbles.